Thanks everybody for joining. We are here today. I'm Michael Waite from Red Hat with another edition of the OpenShift Commons Briefings Operator Hours. And today we are fortunate enough to have with us Ravish Dewan from Jogit. Ravish is the president and CEO of the company. How are you today, Ravish? Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Thanks for coming. I know that we uh, turn this one around in just a couple of weeks, so we're really, really happy to have you here today talking to us. What are you, uh, what are you going to be talking to us about? I was just going to talk about uh, Jogit as a company, what we are doing, and how we are partnering with uh, Red Hat OpenShift. It's a great platform, and and here to share some stories. Uh, that, that sounds good. So, Jogit. Uh, how'd you, how'd, how'd the company found? Wasn't it in 2009, I think, right? It was, uh, it was just a source forge project and then, and then, uh, you know, you guys productized it. Tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we started back in 2009. Um, Mike, uh, at the time there was a lot of buzz around workflow and VPM and, uh, you know, automation. And we started as a open source workflow, uh, platform. And then, um, you know, as the time passed by, we were developing the open, ship, uh, open source for uh, for workflow. And somewhere around 2014, we pivoted on the, being the low-code platform. We were trying to do a lot of things visually without, um, you know, writing code if we can. And there came this whole concept of low-code platforms and citizen developers, and we pivoted on that. So today we are a low-code platform. Um, you know, a lot of things can be done visually, uh, building a process, building an application fast. Um, and, and we are, we are now working as a local platform. Okay. And you guys are headquartered in Maryland. Is that right? That is correct. Columbia, Maryland. But you ha must have other offices. I think I saw some in Malaysia and China. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what, what you guys globally distributed? Yes, we have uh, we have a global presence now. We have an office in in Maryland, Colombia, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. We have an office in China. Uh, we have an office in Indonesia as well. I mean, we hear it all the time: low code, no code. I've been talking with you at various different events and trade shows for years. You seem to be, you know, the the main peer leader for this. So let's let's talk about what it is. What does it do? How do people use it? Let's 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 go. So, um, my low-code um, platform, and I would say uh, the acceleration of digital transformation is what is going on right now. And um, we observe that there are not enough either developers available to, you know, do the application development and go through that full process, or business does not have enough time to go through, you know, sharing all that they want to do with the with the developers and are in the need of getting these things done much faster than what we have traditionally been doing. And um, also from industry trend standpoint, if you look at Gartner's prediction, you know, Gartner recently released their, you know, uh, future predictions uh, next five years. And they're saying by 2024, uh, every large organization will have three to four low code platforms, um, you know, within their company use. Now that's a big, um, you know, statement. The re reason is because um, everyone wants to do things faster, and you know, as you do the knowledge transfer from business to to IT and all, and to deliver the application, it takes time. And what low code platforms are really enabling is enabling the citizen developer or the business user to be able to build the applications for themselves and you know, configure them and move fast. And this market is maturing every day and speeding up the application development process. But is faster always better? I mean, what about, you know, how, how do you deal with QA, release engineering? I mean, I mean, just cranking things up faster, doesn't that cause problems and introduce yeah. risk in other places? I, I, that's a very good question, Mike. And I'll share this with you. And we, we do, you know, caution our customers as well that, um, if you try to automate a process, you get an automated process, right? You can go faster. But if you automate a mess, you get an automated mess. 
that becomes difficult to handle as well. So it's not necessary the fast is always good. It, it has to be done with caution and with governance in place. And the, the customers, what we have seen is the customers who have implemented that governance in place ahead of time are able to do things much faster with better quality and really good business outcomes. We have customers in, uh, we have a really good manufacturing customer in Canada that has implemented um, Jogate with literally no developers, but they followed the process internally and they're able to do really, you know, interesting apps um, uh, today, you know, within the organization and much faster. And, and I should, I, I know you know this, but I'll remind this for all the people who are watching as well, that we're, we're streaming this live we're on YouTube, we're on uh, Facebook Live and, and Twitch Live. If anyone has any questions for Ravish, please post them in the chat and we'll make sure that we work them in um, as we go forward here. So, um, Jogit, it's kind of an interesting name. Um, red Hat, everyone's like, well, it's, it's a red hat. I don't really know what a Jogit is. So, uh, how did you guys come up with the name Jogit? What does it mean? Tell me about that. Yeah. So um, Jogit is a Malaysian term and this whole journey started back in Malaysia uh, when we started the open source uh, project and um, Jogit means in Malaysian terms dance, um, the traditional folk dance um, and um, it was team was debating what should we name this and the whole intent was as we are talking about process automation and and creating this whole complex business processes or an automating business processes, it requires a lot of coordination across the enterprise, right? And, and the whole idea was to depict that, uh, that coordination, that multiple you know, teams working together, um, just like what happens in the dance. You need a lot of coordination with the team members to, to deliver an experience. And that's exactly what we meant um, when we named Joget. Um, you know, coordination, coordination across various teams, multiple business, you know, units or IT un, uh, departments to build and deliver business, complex business applications. It's kind of a dance within the organization as well. And that's what the Jogate name represents. Hmm. Okay. And, and you, uh, I think you, you've changed the logo a couple of times, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think that's, uh, you're right. We changed the logo, um, uh, uh, I think back in 2019, we released the new logo to really align ourselves better from market standpoint. Um, uh, but if you look at the core, it still remains the same. We wanted to make it a little more bold uh, with what we are doing now. Uh, we have not been a company that you know captures your email and floods you with the the marketing stuff, um, but rather uh, bold in the sense that we are able to deliver really large applications, uh, you know, applications of the scale of ERP now using the local platform. And that's what we wanted to represent in our new logo, if you will. Okay. So what about, what about Ravish Duwan, president and CEO? What, what, where, where have you been? I, I'm guessing this probably isn't your first, your, your first, first gig. Where, where'd you come from? What, what made you decide to become the president of the company? Yep. So, um, um, Michael, we uh, you know, just going back, um, back. Uh, I come from India, and I started my career as a startup itself back in India. It was those uh, dot com days, and back in uh, I would say late nineties or mid nineties, um, I um, I launched a company uh, in uh, CAD CAM, which and and then you know got into this whole dot com stuff and released a, a, a city portal back in um, 1999 um, and you know I was got a chance to become a young entrepreneur at that time and eventually I came to you know I, I left that uh, venture and came to US on a um, yeah, I worked for a Infosys consulting company large consulting company of India one of the top ones and had a chance to get experience here in United States um, working with customers, really understanding what means important to them. And while I was doing this, I was also exploring the open source space. Um, that's where I 
uh, you know, found Jogate very interesting and had a chance to, you know, uh, work on an advisory basis. Uh, if you look at my experience, I've been on the other side of the table all the time, consuming the products, spent a lot of time in, in, in the industry, you know, working with large companies like not Western uh, Mutual or Nationwide Insurance and then Blue Cross Blue Shield. So I spent a lot of my stint in, in, in licensing these products and implementing these products as a customer. And there came a time when I realized that there is a lot of expense that is happening on the customer side that can be optimized and there, there should be a better way to do these things. And, you know, I joined uh, Joget uh, to take it to the next level. I felt that um, it is in the right marketplace right now and it is the right time to create that, um, you know, wave in low code platform and change how we do application development and not just change how we do application development, even from infrastructure standpoint, you know, looking at some of these newer, cooler technologies like, uh, you know, um, AI, machine learning, and then, you know, containers, all this is changing how we were doing uh, application development earlier. And I felt, you know, bringing this all together would be a really good game changer. Um, and it is now in the industry, if you will, uh, if you look at it, um, you know, going from no infrastructure to a completely, you know, uh, full-fledged application has been super accelerated now. And that's what drives my passion um, in Joget. Hmm. Okay. So what about, what about Joget and Red Hat? I, I, I've been around a long time. I've known you for, for years. It seems like you folks are everywhere with us we were at events together you folks have a red hat certified operator that's in our operator catalog you have a presence in the red hat marketplace so there's a commercial opportunity there for customers to to actually consume joget from the red hat marketplace how has the red hat partnership been working with you yeah um that's a good question mike and uh let me just take a step back and talk about uh, what is happening in the industry that we observe as um, as Joget. And then we'll come back to the, the question. If you sure. look at the industry, there is a lot going on from cloud migration. And all of a sudden, this whole COVID thing has accelerated the digital transformation for our customers. Um, and what is happening is in, in order to get to the cloud, in order to get to the, um, the cloud native applications, Customers are looking at how they can move their existing stuff, how they can rewrite their existing stuff and all, and how can they get rid of their legacy application and be more cloud native. So there is this trend going on. The other trend that is going on is everyone is talking about AI. Pick any software, they, they, they are talking about AI. We are not an AI company, I do want to uh, highlight that. Uh, but we do see an opportunity wherein there are plenty of AI engines. I am, I've been talking to, you know, uh, a company called Conversion, wherein we, we are exploring the partnership to, uh, to create the document ingestion. Um, there is another company for credit scoring, um, another company on the clinical healthcare. Um, um, so, so there are various AI engines that are available and customers, when they consume that engine, they need to create the applications around it. So there's this one, another trend going on. Then there is obviously containers that is completely changing how you develop and deploy applications. Um, we, if we look at all three ends, we want to do the same for our customers. And I felt that Red Hat Marketplace was an extremely great strategy from uh, hybrid cloud, if you will. I want to do it on-prem today, and then I want to take it on the cloud tomorrow or vice versa. Um, you know, this, this whole Reddit marketplace um, model gives them, give the customer ability to do what they want or what they are willing to do. And also enable them for future. You want to be on on-prem and on cloud today and then move everything to the cloud tomorrow. You can do that. And I think riding on that wave, um, you know, with Reddit marketplace and with Red Hat as a partner would be a great position to be in. Uh, we are enabling any of our Reddit you know, customers or Joget customers to be able to go to the marketplace. Um, you know, they can directly license Joget from Reddit marketplace itself. 
And when you do that, that's where the Jogger operator comes into picture. You can quickly create those environments and be in the application development, releasing that business application very quickly um, and building that, uh, the applications very quickly. Um, so I see that as a, as a tremendous power to go from no infrastructure to a business application, you know, really fast. Were, were, were you folks an early adopter of containers when containers first really became, well, I guess mainstream ver version two, were you folks early adopters of that and said, yes, this is the future of application development, we got to containerize, or did you have to wait for customers to start saying, hey, where's your containers? No, actually we have been the early adopters and I will explain this is where we got an advantage also to move fast. Um, uh, Mike, because we already had the containerized Joget, and as we started the partnership with Joget uh, with Red Hat, uh, the first thing was to you know get the container certified. Guess what? We already have a container, so it just took us two weeks to you know get through all that process, just because we were already you know thinking about what industry trends are going to be and how we can you know move fast in that space, and you know when you talk about Joget and OpenShift, you know, the next thing came was the operator. You know, can I make it super easy for our customers to, you know, click, 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 and, you know, they have the environment up and running? Absolutely. That's where the operator was extremely helpful to do that for us. And, 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 you know, here's that and people can, but people can use Joget low code, no code without the operator, right? It's just, it, it just makes it easier for, for managing a distributed cluster. Yes, yes. You can use it, Joget, anywhere you want. I mean, on-prem, on cloud, uh, on OpenShift, off of OpenShift. Let's say to, today you have a Joget environment, and this is something that we are recommending to our customers also. You know, look at the container environment, look at OpenShift also. So you get a, a huge, tremendous advantage when you do that. Um, we, um, I'll, I'll just share an interesting story. We have a customer, a large customer, rather large customer, who uh, was building, uh, had a need to build a very critical application on Joget um, or very fast. They embarked on Joget. They finished the application within four weeks. So very quickly got the business, understood their requirements, enabled them. They, they developed the application in four weeks. Then they were gonna deploy in, in, in that application in production, not realizing how fast they were moving on application their infrastructure took more than one and a half month to get it uh, established to really deploy Joget. So I was I was sharing our observation with that customer that you know you took way less time to develop the business application and you took way more time to develop your infrastructure on which you are going to deploy Joget. You can accelerate all that and super accelerate all that with you know technologies like OpenShift and and you know Joget operator and all that. And, and and presumably other platforms as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and you're all open source. Your Joe gets 100% open source, or is there parts that are, parts that aren't? Uh, good question, uh, Mike. We have uh, we are an open source. We have a community edition. Um, obviously, the enterprise edition is what has additional features from security, from you know enhanced capability to build applications, processes. Um, we have an API builder baked into our enterprise version. So there are a number of capabilities in the enterprise version that are not available in community edition. Uh, but yes, community edition is absolutely free open source. Um, you know, we have more than um, 11,000 community members who are you know, participating in what we're doing from open source. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was going to say, I, th I thought you had something around like almost 12,000 community members. So that, that's, that's a very, very active community around Joget. Yes, yes. So, and, and we are looking at um, expanding that um, as we see the demand for low code um, applications increasing. And in fact, you know, here is another interesting fact that I want to share. Um, a lot of product companies are now looking at, you know, low code platforms um, like Joget to rebuild their, their own applications in low code platform because there is a pent up demand on, on customizing their own software for each customer. 
and that becomes a challenge every time when you're dealing with a product and being on open sh or, or you know being on a low code platform it makes it very easy for them to make these changes customization and yet not break their bank from resources and application development standpoint and we are seeing a lot of interesting uh, requests that is coming to us as a partner request um, we want to sunset our product and rather be on a low code platform so we can move fast with our customers and that's a very interesting you know um, things that are happening in, in product space also so tell me about some of the customer cases that you see out there Every, everyone has some some um, spotlight stories to talk about. Can you share with us some of the some of the coolest customer stories that that you have? Yeah, sure. So um, let me talk about not rather a customer, but um, we actually donated um, the software just because we felt that you know it would, would have been good for um, the not for profit. We there is a not for profit called Bo Doctors Without Borders. And they reached out to us. We want to use your, your platform, and um, we. Um, the interesting thing was they had no engineer in there, and they wanted to build a lab management software for what they were doing. And um, they reached out to us. We thought, you know what, it's for a good cause. Let's let's go ahead and do that. And we, uh, you know, extended the last Joget license at no cost. And to our surprise they actually developed the whole application without even our help and i was kind of amazed to see how this is where we feel that when we are building some of these things with a with a goal in mindset that a citizen developer should be able to build the applications and be able to roll that out in production um this is a perfect example of one of our uh, you know um you know customers or users of joget had no training no exposure to um, you know what they just looked at the you know knowledge base started building the lab application management and they recently came back we want to extend it to for other uh, you know sites as well uh, very interesting to see how they used uh, joget and very quickly created that you know application for themselves so this was very interesting i'm sorry go ahead is there any set out there that Joget is targeted more than others? Like, you know, some companies are very vertically aligned, um, you know, around financial services or telco. I I'm guessing, given that you target developers looking to build code faster and better, that it's applicable to every developer building in any application anywhere in the world, regardless of what type of business they're in. You, you're absolutely right, right Mike. Uh, we are not focused on a particular vertical. We have customers across all verticals, manufacturing, healthcare, banking, um, education, you know, um, aerospace, government. Um, so all, all sorts of customers are there. Uh, in fact, uh, another interesting um, story I want to share is one of our customers is Orange County, California. Um, and they, uh, again, a similar story. They bought Joget. They uh, started working on it. And within three months, um, they were overloaded with what they were doing uh, from their regular business processes. And within three or four months of application development, you know, on Joget and releasing their internal processes on automating their processes on Joget, they went from like a four people team, eight people team to a four people team. Very, very short time frame. And they were able to do this fast. Um, um, you know, in a very, very short time frame. Again, without any particular assistance or any particular formal, you know, um, uh, training, they were they were able to do it on their own. Uh, it's a <clears throat> great example to uh, that may, gives us satisfaction that we are building software uh, and trying to implement those citizen developer principles so they can do it fast themselves as well. Okay, and if someone wasn't going to use Joget. What are the are, are there? Is, is it roll your own, or are, are you the only company out there that does what you do? Or, or how, if, if there are more low code, no code platforms, how do you differentiate yourself from them? Yeah, so uh, excellent question. There are plenty in the market, and there are plenty popping up as well. I will not deny that. Um, 
Uh, but one thing that we, as a principle that we have implemented in Zugate is harnessing, or I would say implementing the open source thought process. Um, we did not want Yogit to be restrictive. Um, and when we say open source, what it means is um, th there is a very strong plugin architecture that we have built. So any new piece that we want to roll out, we can easily create, uh, or even our customers, and this is something that our customers have done a lot as well, create their own plugins in Yogit. So uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a very specific way of creating a screen and a widget that you want, and you want to use that as an enterprise across various groups, uh, instead of creating a reusable code, uh, we have we extend the Jogate platform. They can extend the Jogate platform themselves and create plugins around it, and that enables them to, you know, take that Jogate capability to the next level within their organization, and that brings in a you know interesting way to 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 extend Jogate. Uh, we see that happening all the time. Um, a number of our customers, um, you know, request the this feature would be great, that feature would be great. But when they learn that, oh, you know what, uh, we have the power to extend that and create that feature for ourselves, it gives a very different, um, you know, outlook to to what we are doing, uh, you know, with our low code platform. And that's what we are striving for right now. Uh, we have released, in fact, um, with Joget DX, we have released some major capability like you know, API building, you can, you know, as you are creating business applications, you want to integrate that within your organization as well. No business application is going to sit in a silo and not interact with multiple existing applications in the enterprise. Uh, so we have created a, we have released a, a API, um, you know, builder within Joget. You can create APIs around the applications that you've built or processes that you've built in Joget. Um, and that's- That was in- that was in March of this year, wasn't it? Just before the, everything changed. That is correct. I think I was, I, I think I was reading reading an article uh, was back on um, early March, but uh, I got confused there because you know you were talking about you know your artificial intelligence and application performance management, and I was like, well, geez, I don't think they're an AI vendor. I think they probably just enable better AI development. Is that right? That is correct. And just to give a little insight to that, um, um, let's say example, you have developed a TensorFlow, um, you know, model in your AI, uh, let's say for image map matching. I'm just giving an example, right? And in fact, there is a blog on OpenShift, um, uh, how Red Hat OpenShift and Joget and TensorFlow you can utilize. So assume you are an AI uh, company and you've created your um, model um, in, in TensorFlow. Uh, we have a currently we have a plugin in Joget for TensorFlow. We are looking at other AI engines as well, but we have a plugin in TensorFlow. You upload your model, you configure your inputs and outputs, and you can get an application around it very quickly. So that's the that's the goal that we are targeting. We don't want to be an AI vendor. We are not an AI vendor. But what we are is give you the base capability and the infrastructure to build your app, application on the, the the model that you have built in, in AI space. Now, there is always an API integration that you can do with any AI engine today, but we are trying to see how we can bake that into a, a you know, out of box capability. And, and that's where the AI uh, things come into picture. You mentioned about the application monitoring. So just putting my, um, you know, experience hat on, I've built a lot of large systems in, in various large organizations. And one of the things that really hits you hard always is performance. You user wants everything fast. When you are building these screens um, or building the application, user experience is important and you, response time is very, very important. Um, and I face various challenges using a number of large softwares to build these applications. And the moment you hit this performance in production, it becomes a, a huge blocker, if you will. And keeping that in mind, we built the application performance monitoring piece in within Joget as a capability out of the box. Um, the idea was anyone who wants to build an application in Joget, they can get a performance dashboard out of the box without making any specific instrumentation. You can create, we create this performance dashboard for you to look at 
what are your uh, transaction response times, if you want to establish alerts, something going slow. Um, so this capability enables our customers to, to monitor their apps in production. In fact, we have another interesting capability related to performance monitoring, which is the performance analyzer. So when you're building an app, when a non-coder or a non-developer is building an app or so-called citizen developer is building an application, they won't realize drag and drop and put an image here, realizing that image is actually slowing down their application, right? So, so these performance analyzers, um, you establish a threshold and you can see how your screen performance is going to be ahead of time. And that gives a, a really easy way for non-coders also to look at what they're building and is it going to be efficient in, in production, if you will. So is that not to wrap, but there's there's lots of vendors out there that deliver APM application performance management monitoring. Um, I think we all know who they are. Does this mean then that if a customer uses the Joget low code, no code platform as a Red Hat certified operator for OpenShift that they don't need other APM vendors? I would not say that, um, Mike, because um, if their application, if those APM vendors go horizontal. You know, the APM functionality that we have is within Joget and Joget applications. And yes, it covers the APIs that you're calling externally or the database that you're calling externally. But in an organization, there might be multiple applications, some in Joget, some, you know, not in Joget or a legacy application. And you want to look at um, horizontally across applications, you, you definitely need those uh, APM tools. So there is absolutely, um, you know, that their need exists but this is more specific to how a non-coder, you, you, you cannot expect a non-coder or citizen developer to go into you know, some of these APM tools and make sense out of it. It's very, very, it, it, these are complicated tools and these are not simple tools to use. But a non-coder can take a look at his screen and see, you know, there is a, this portion of the screen is highlighted. It's gonna take, you know, three seconds to render. You know, that's something that they can easily understand. And our intent with APM is to make them, make it easy for them to look at. Um, and they can always configure an API and see, oh, this API is slowing me down, that's it. But the the detailed, you know, horizontal uh, monitoring, if you will, that's definitely those APM tools can help. Okay, well, that, that, that covers the APM and the AI question that I had, there was one other piece that was, came out in the announcement, which, which was around the progressive web apps in Joget DX. What's that all about? Yes. And, um, and why, why should question. people care about progressive web apps? Excellent question, um, um, Mike. If you, again, looking at the industry trends, we are, you know, we don't have any crystal ball, um, you know, with us. What we are doing is what we are observing from our customers or listening to our customers. Uh, progressive web apps are the new uh, ways of, uh, you know, um, looking at um, uh, the web applications, if you will. Um, progressive web apps is like uh, giving these, some of the offline capabilities, um, your ability for notification. So I don't need to rely on, on native apps. There is a whole debate going on, you know, uh, is uh, will native apps live or or things will be more of progressive web, web apps on your devices on your on your browsers so on and so forth and um, we felt that that is another essential element from Joget standpoint so within our product Joget DX which is on Reddit marketplace as well we any application you create using Joget drag and drop um, you are creating a progressive web app for yourself. We have a push notification mechanism that you can enable, um, a little bit of offline functionality that you you get out of the box when you are using, you know, uh, Joget. So, so these are some common needs from our customers and a direction that industry is driving towards. So we baked that in, as a capability in our, um, you know, product. And now, if you are creating a a, a Joget application. It is enabled for mobile, it is enabled for web, and it has those PWA capabilities baked in as well. So you said, based on the direction that the industry is driving towards, 
How much do you think things are going to change? I mean, there's been a lot of change in the way apps are built. Certainly, you know, in the 19 years that I've been here at Red Hat, or maybe it's 20 now, but something like that, you know, it was, it was Linux and applications built with C. And then there was, you know, middleware layers and, and then there was virtualization with VMware and, and other vendors. And then there was, you know, the disruptive change of OpenStack and OpenStack was the, the shiny object. And they were, no, 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 now it's containers. Containers are the shiny object and you don't need VMs anymore. Then there's, then there's, you know, Kubernetes and orchestration of container platforms and, and operators. Is this going to just keep on going like this and how are you folks positioned to be able to, you know, change with the times. Yeah. So I think one of the things that we, uh, that's an excellent question, Mike, and we get that a lot. Um, you know, I build an application on Joget, um, and the technology changes and what, right? Um, you think about, we were, we were doing without containers earlier, and now we have thought through for our customers and enabled the container for them. Essentially, what we are trying to do as a goal from Joget standpoint is enabling uh, our customer for future proof applications. Um, we don't know today, everyone is talking about the cloud. Tomorrow, there is a change in direction, um, you know, deploy somewhere else. Don't know. But what we are trying to do is, how can I enable the customer to future proof their application? If they did not have a PWA capability and they want a PWA capability, if they were using Joget yesterday and they are using today and they update to DX, they get those facility, uh, you know, capabilities, you know, from Joget standpoint. And we want to be ahead, you know, of our customer needs, if you will, to give them or enable them for future applications as well. That's what we are um, now. As your to your question about, do you think it will keep changing? Absolutely, it will keep changing. You know, but the need for customer will remain exactly the same. I want to do this fast. I want to do it quickly and I want to deploy it quickly and get the business value out of it. That basic demand will remain every single time. Our means to how we deliver that will keep changing. And it is going to be our you know, duty to ensure that we are trying to be ahead in that you know, adoption for our platform so we can enable our customers to do the same and, and you know, do that heavy lifting for them. Well, so Let's just pretend for a second that that public cloud, multi-cloud doesn't become the end-all platform or the way that apps are built and, and apps are consumed. What if everything reverted back to the data center in, in a couple of years because of, you know, space aliens, who knows? It, does that take away any of the advantages that Joget can and, and the benefits that Joget can provide to you know, people building apps. If it's just back in the data center, how how much of how much of applications moving to the to the cloud is enabling the need for your solutions? Yeah, actually, um, Mike, we are already ready for that. Um, whether you want to do it on cloud today and move it to on on prem tomorrow, or you start with on prem and move it to cloud, we are already ready for that. That's the reason you will find you know, all sorts of images across various cloud platforms from Joget already um, out there. And, you know, our customers are doing it. They, some of the customers start with the trial on our cloud and then they say, you know what, we are going to be building a sensitive application and we want them uh, that on-prem. They do that even today. So I don't think we have to wait for that, that those things are happening. Depending upon the customer need, whether you want to be on the cloud, on-prem, in containers, on all sorts of various platforms, we want to be able to cater to you as simple as that. And we want to do it now, not in future. You, the, the future, it will become a demand rather than a, a want to do this. Um, and we want to be ahead of that right now. So if you have a Joget application today on-prem, you can easily go to, to cloud or vice versa. Um, there is no, the, 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 the fluidity is, is in both the ways. And this is where I see value for Red Hat Hybrid Cloud uh, that, that Marketplace is enabling. And, you know, just, just quickly, one more thing I wanted to mention on the, on the Red Hat Marketplace. This is where I, it fascinates me and, and excites me to partner uh, with Red Hat also is um, managing software 
as assets within any organization, it's a nightmare. It is absolutely nightmare. If you go to any large organization, have you, do you know what licenses you have bought? Do you know what you have bought? And is there a, you know, even though there are CMDBs and all sorts of solution, very, very difficult to keep track of. And I believe, you know, the customers who are aligned with the Reddit marketplace and start their licensing there, it will be a very structured way of managing their software in inventory also. And um, the more they utilize the, or the more they consolidate, the better it's gonna be for them. It is not an easy job, and there is a lot of wastage that happens today. today. A number of organizations don't even know they have these software assets and, and licenses that they're paying for. And you know that's what happens in every single large organization. Hmm. And just going back to the build it once, deploy anywhere, that, 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 that's, that's our story as well with OpenShift being the layer of abstraction. So if you build your app for OpenShift, you get to deploy, you know, this cloud, that cloud on premise in a hybrid model without having to, having to, you know, rebuild it every time. Um, what do you think is going to win? Who, who's going to win? So every, all these cloud vendors have a Kubernetes strategy. Who do you think's got it right? Yeah. Um, got it right is yet to be answered, uh, if you will. Uh, and yes, all the cloud providers have the, um, the, the, you know, Kubernetes strategy and all. I think uh, from, if you look at from my vantage point, and I have been in customer shoes for a very long time. Uh, uh, my, I think the flexibility will be one that will win the game. If I, if I, if my strategy is going to be driving me towards only one cloud, I see that as a problem. And that's, that's vendor locking in the cloud. <laughs> exactly. Right? So I think the, the, mm -hmm. the strategy that enables the customer fluidity in what they want to do and how much they want to be fluid in on, on which cloud, I think that's something that is going to be valuable. Other than that, you know, don't have any crystal ball with me. Uh, but uh, if I am a, on on a customer end or a consuming end, these will be my decision parameters. What kind of flexibility can I get? How soon can I move these things if if I need to? You know, from uh, from one cloud to another cloud, and all also on prem. And I think these are the you know guiding principles for us as Joget also. I want to be able to give the same flexibility to our customers as well. Hence, you know, um, uh, very strong alignment with OpenShift that I'm looking at. So, if, so when people are using your, your your solution, and let's just say that there's some cloud vendors out there that are doing everything they 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 possibly can to create as much proprietary lock-in to their platform as possible, and they're and they're building apps using Jogit, and they're running on this platform, and then at some point they decide, we hey, we're getting Oracle all over again, I, you know. I can't have this. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to, you know, um, that platform and you know a hybrid model with you know part data center. There's absolutely no rebuilding of anything as long as your apps as long as the apps were built using your uh, functionality. Yeah. It's just um, a, they can just pick it up and move it, and there's no re, no you know I don't even know if recompiling is still a word anymore, but yeah. I, I think all the vendors should think about that, uh, quite frankly, um, Mike, and that's something that, you know, drives me as well uh, from application perspective. If I, if we create something that sticks on only one and limits the customers uh, tomorrow, it's gonna be a challenge. And it's a risk also. I mean, if you, uh, if you look at some of the large applications that I build and I get logged on, um, it's a risk as well, you know, from operations perspective, so on and so forth. So I think that flexibility is is critical. And um, and all this, this whole fight is uh, towards cloud is obviously creating the flexibility and all, but it all boils down to the bottom line as well. So if today I have, you know, just think about a scenario wherein I have the application that is fluid. I wanna go on cloud A, cloud B, cloud C. The bottom line is going to be the cost also tomorrow. If I am getting that same flexibility across all these um, clouds, then my success is going to be ability to move from one cloud to another cloud that is giving me an efficient or cost efficiency as well.
and you know that's where it boils down today if i start with one cloud and i build all the strategy around that cloud and tomorrow i see you know what they came up with the newer ways of making things cheaper and you know this cloud is better and i'm stuck there you know i'm logged in just like i'm logged in today on on prem <laughs> so that's something that i feel is a fundamental element to look at to ensure customers keep that insight um they again they can start with one cloud but they should think about multi cloud strategy anyways and that's where the hybrid cloud you know if you will comes into picture hmm well i i kind of feel like i have been just bombarding you here with my <laughs> with, with my my questions trying to uh trying to get as, as much information out of you how how are you folks dealing now with the way things are so as i said I've been with you in San Diego. We've, I'm sure we bumped into each other at the KubeCon conventions in Copenhagen and, you know, Amsterdam, of course, as we know, was, didn't actually happen um, <laughs> in person. But, you know, what are you folks planning for going forward and how are you going to be doing driving market visibility for, you know, Jogit going forward, given that everything is virtual? Yeah, actually, uh, in fact, uh, just a plug in uh, here, um, Mike, you know, uh, we are actually planning for a deeper conversation with industry analysts regarding, you know, this whole hybrid cloud and Jogit and how, you know, it can work together. But just taking a step back with what has happened in, with this whole pandemic and COVID and, you know, um, we observe that customers really require um, empathy as well they are in a very you know tough position as well and a lot of our customers uh, reached out to us regarding um, they have this whole bring their workforce back and so on and so forth and again just sharing another customer as i mentioned um, you know back in canada they wanted to get their was manufacturing customer they wanted to get their employees back and they we uh, listen to them and, and um, help them roll out a, a very quick application on Joget. And realize that not just them, all the customers would want to do that. So we have started releasing a few applications like, you know, temperature scanning application, travel advisory, absolutely free, go to Joget Marketplace, download that, you know, and, you know, just go live with those applications. And best part is, you know, you can download and change them based on your needs. There is a customer you know, employer, uh, employee temperature tracking app, you, if you want to automate that, I mean, you can come in your, you can create, you know, all your employees there, it issues a QR code, you know, anyone coming in, stick that QR code on, track their temperatures, very, very quickly to be able to, you know, help our customers um, that are in need to bring their workforce back. Or, you know, if their workforce is back, they want to implement some processes where they want to, uh, you know, track some of these things. Uh, we have tried to, you know, create those applications and roll that out absolutely free of cost on our marketplace. So that's something that we are doing from future standpoint. I think it is going to be, um, you know, world has changed as simple as that. The new normal is, is, is absolutely different than what we were in, you know, in earlier. And there's a very interesting study that was released by Forrester. Um, I think it was back in June, um, May or June, that talks about even though a lot of organizations thought they had their processes automated, they didn't realize there are a number of steps that were still manual in nature. And that amounts to 70% of the organization will still have to further automate what they have done. And that's an interesting number to look at. And when you're talking about the paper processes and all, it becomes absolutely essential now to to automate that and we are seeing the demand right now uh, on our end as well customers are just coming back and saying that I'm, we were having this paper process i'm going to go online make it completely um, you know automated you know customers can directly interact with our processes we see the demand and we are hoping that we will be able to support that demand you know, or cater to that demand That's a good thing. So you've been on our, on our show. We've been talking about who your company is, what your low-code, no-code solution works, how you have a Red Hat certified operator, 
or OpenShift. It's available in the marketplace. We haven't done a, a demo or uh, any any technical, you know, in the weeds. Let me show you how to edit this config file and why I look at the impact on the, you know, the outcome. If someone wants to have that type of uh, workshop, is it? Do you folks make those available? Are there are there deep dive technical presentations that you folks put on so someone who's interested can actually you know log on and actually get their hands dirty, so to speak? Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, we have plenty of resources on on YouTube, on our website, on um, you know on actually OpenShift blogs as well. Um, so plenty of tutorials available. Um, Plenty of uh, we do webinars. We do deeper webinars wherein we show how to build the applications. Um, there is a there is a really um, you know nice video to to look at OpenShift and Joget. You can you will start with the OpenShift cluster and you want to build an application and boom, 15 minutes. In fact, we did a webinar um, back in September, um, Mike, uh, regarding with a demo how you can in 15 minutes how you can go from no infrastructure to a, a full fledged application that has a business process behind it, uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, we, we do plenty of webinars. There are plenty of resources available on OpenShift and Joget um, um, on the Reddit marketplace as well. There are a bunch of tutorials that we've rolled out. So plenty of resources. I wonder, if we, I wonder if someone on the Red Hat team on the call here could post the link to that webinar that we did, because it was on the devops.com site. So hopefully one of the, uh, one of the Team staffers can go to the on-demand site and pull that webinar up and drop it in the link here. I remember that. That was pretty good. That was a little bit um, uh, out, out lower than my pay grade or above my pay grade, but uh, I know that the uh, I know that the, the technical people on the call found it really interesting and very helpful. So hopefully that that will pop up here shortly in the chat for people. So we're getting close to the end of the hour. What I don't want is for you to we hang up and you say, gosh, you know, I had an entire hour to address much of the world on mainstream um, media. Why didn't I say X? Yeah, so I uh, wanted to keep this for the last, uh, Mike. We are actually announcing a, a Tech for Humanity program within Joge. The intent of that program is gonna be, um, um, we see this whole, you know, tight financial environment that COVID has created, we see a need to help a lot of our not-for-profit organizations. So what we are doing is we are rolling out a, a Tech for Humanity program within Joget that will enable our customers, anyone who is a Joget customer will be able to donate uh, a Joget license to their choice of charity or not-for-profit that they believe in. And I, I think that that's our way to look at, you know, this whole world from a very different eyes, how we're in, we all need to help each other, as simple as that. And I believe, um, and and the re the other reason is, these not-for-profits may not have, you know, application developers or to automate their business processes, right? So, right. you know, with Joget, they will be able to do it fast, they will be able to do it easily, plenty of resources available online to learn Joget. You don't need a sophisticated knowledge to get started with Joget very easy to do, very easy to implement. Um, we, we feel this is uh, our way of giving back to the community um, uh, and to the organizations that our customers believe in as well. So, you know, just a quick uh, thing I want to announce today, and that's something that, you know, we'll be, uh, we are launching uh, and hopefully our customers will be able to take, um, you know, benefit out of this program. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Oh, and if people look in chat, you'll notice that one of our team uh, linked the the webinar that we did with with um, with Ravish and Jogit. Uh, it was at the beginning of September, I think. Anyways, it it it's going to be on there online on the DevOps site, and uh, we encourage you to join it. I think it was uh, a very deep dive technical discussion with a lot of a lot of really cool a lot of really cool features to it. I think we're just about out of time. Um, I can't tell you how happy we are to have you have you know been here. You know, you you folks are a great partner of ours. Um, you know, every uh, event that we do, you're at, you're 
supporting us with, with press activities and, and having your Red Hat certified operator available for open shift and, and having, you know, your, your commercial offering in the marketplace, I think is really, really great. So, um, always happy to invite you to participate with us because you folks just never tell us, no, I can't because it's always, yes, I can. And, and that's, that's a really, that's a really great thing to have, you know, with a partner. So, um, Ravish Dewan, president and CEO of Jogit. Thank you for joining us here today on the OpenShift Commons briefings, our, our operator, op, <coughs> excuse me, our operator hours edition. Um, thanks so much and we, um, we wish the best of luck to you going forward in the rest of the year. Thank you very much, Mike, and we are play, pleased to be part, part of the Red Hat uh, family as well. Thank you so much for all the support from Red Hat. And, and actually, someone just popped a question in the chat. Where can we learn more about Jogit? Um, again, I Is it the say, company? You can learn more about the company by going to the company website. But where, where does, if someone wants to really, you know, get a trial of Jogit or, you know, uh, kick the tires or, you know, what's, you, what's the best place to do that? Yeah, you know, easily, if you want to try Jogit, you know, just go to jogitcloud.com. You can register. For a free trial, 14 days, it won't even ask for credit card. Um, and there is, a, we have a knowledge base, dev.jogit.org. Uh, very easy. I mean, just search for Jogit knowledge base and you will get all sorts of information around Jogit, how to do what. Go to YouTube, you know, just search for Jogit and you will be able to get a lot of how to videos, how to get started with Jogit, so on and so forth. So plenty of resources online uh, to get started. Well, if there's no other, if there's no other questions or, or helpful prompts coming in to the, uh, to the chat window, then I think we can, I think we can give you a minute and a half back on your day, which is not something that happens very often. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike.